Welcome to another episode on my how to paint series. In this episode, we're just going to paint. So I recommend that you start with the previous four episodes before you watch this one. What we're going to do today is we're going to make a painting based on Edvard Munch's The Scream. What I love about this painting, particularly as a inspiration for a beginner's art project, is that Munch painted it quickly. There's a lot of energy, the brush strokes are fluid and they're fast and he's even scratching into the painting. There's not a lot of fiddling and fussing here. He's just releasing a ton of energy out onto the surface of the painting and it makes for a super dynamic image. It also allows an artist who's making a picture inspired from it a lot of freedom because you can modify the colors to your own liking. Munch himself painted five or six different versions of this painting, and you likewise can paint your own slightly different version of this painting. Now, just before we begin painting, I just want to mention that Edward Munch was painting at a time where artists were deliberately challenging the traditional ways that artists had been painting for centuries. And he was in fact using colors in a different way than they had been used previously and trying to actually create a certain amount of flatness in his picture. Flatness was kind of the rage in painting for most of the 20th century, which culminated in abstract expressionism where the attempt is to create as flat of a painting as possible. So, in fact, in this painting by Munch, he is using warm colors in the background and some cool colors in the foreground, which is not what I've been teaching you over the past little while. So let's kind of ignore some of the colors that Munch used in this painting. Let's try to paint the colors that we've been practicing. So to start out, we're going to draw this picture onto a canvas or a piece of paper and it might be easiest to identify where the horizon line in the background is which is just a little bit higher than center. I'm going to draw this kind of lake formation and then this railing that goes diagonally all the way across the page. In this version, Munch has put this uh, red bar on the side for some reason, I'm not sure what purpose it served. You can include it or disregard it, it's up to you. I'm then going to draw these figures in and the figure in the foreground. I've got the railing here and a bit of this uh, boardwalk. A great thing about this picture is we have very well defined foreground, middle ground, and background elements. And we're going to use different color temperatures in each of these zones to really create depth in the picture, which will be very different than the way that Munch would have painted it. But again, we are trying to capitalize on all of the knowledge that we've learned so far in these lessons. Now there's different ways I could paint this picture. I could paint it in the style of Munch, who is known for painting with a dry brush technique, which means to paint with the paintbrush as it's drying out. So you could get a little bit of paint on your brush and to wipe a little bit of that off onto a napkin or a towel, and then to paint that slightly drier paintbrush onto the canvas. Conversely, you could paint very fluid, solid colors into all of these spaces. It's up to you to decide how you want to interpret this picture. So to start with this painting, I'm going to paint the sky, which is comprised of cool blues, cool reds, cool yellows, and cool oranges. Yes, there are cool oranges. And while I have that cool yellow on my paintbrush, I'm going to paint that into that lake there as well. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix some of this darker blue by mixing the warm red and the cool blue together. So I'm going to put that in. Okay, and I'm going to use maybe a little bit of that on this railing and even a little bit of that on these figures as well. Remember, the great thing with acrylic painting is that if I don't like anything I've done, I can just wait for it to dry and then paint right over top of it, and no one will know it was ever there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start painting some warmer colors into the painting. And how about let's just start with a clean brush painting some of the warm reds, warm blues into the foreground. I'm also going to mix a high chroma violet using the cool red and the warm blue together. I'm going to paint that kind of in this maybe shoreline or whatever it is here to over the shoulder of the screaming fellow. Okay. And then I'm gonna, now I'm going to use some warmer yellow and warmer orange. I'm going to paint that into the picture. And now I'm going to put some warm red on this uh, on the side, this border here, which potentially Monk might have seen as a post or a lamp post, or potentially even like a window frame or the edge of uh, a building. And then if you want to finish this painting off with some of these blues on the shoreline, you could do that as well. Again, it's up to you to interpret this picture how you want to. So what, as you look at the painting, determine what you feel the painting requires in order to finish it. You, you'll notice there's very little green in the original picture, but if I want, I can add some warmer green in the foreground and a little bit of warm and and a little bit of cooler greens in the background and middle ground. I mean, there is a little bit of green on the face of the screaming figure, so I could put that in there. So it looks like we finished another painting. I want to congratulate you on creating an original piece of artwork. It doesn't matter if it's a copy or it's been inspired by another artist's artwork. You've created something that did not exist before. No one has painted this painting exactly the way you have painted it. I encourage you to hang it somewhere in your house, regardless of whether you think it is an incredible success or an abject failure. We're still learning, we're getting better and better. If your picture doesn't look like mine, that's okay. If it doesn't look like Monk's, that's okay too. You're interpreting it. There's no right or wrong ways to do this. Whether you know it or not, you are getting better. And if you look back at the paintings you started with just a few weeks ago, you should notice a huge leap forward. Often what I'll do is I'll get people to paint a painting on the first day of class, and then we'll do that same painting six months later, and people are usually astounded by the growth that they can witness in their own development. So see you next week. Have courage.